Welcome to today's screencast with Arthritis SA. The topic is work-life balance and this screencast is relevant for anyone of working age who is living with any of the many, 120 or more, different types of arthritis. This screencast is provided by our collaboration with Job Access. Good morning, my name is Heather Hill. I'm an occupational therapist and the manager of the Employment Assistance Fund under the auspices of Job Access. Thank you so much for your time today. I do hope that the presentation will give you some information that you have not previously known and will encourage you to use the Job Access Programme, in particular the Employment Assistance Fund, for removing disability specific barriers to employment. For those of you who don't know about Job Access, it is the national hub for workplace and employment information for people living with a disability, their employers and service providers. Delivered by the Work Health Group on behalf of the Australian Government, Job Access gives employers, disability service providers and people with a disability access to free support through a central entry point into disability employment services. While many people with disabilities will be unaffected in their daily lives due to their available support networks, they may benefit from additional support, adaptations or technology in their workplace to maintain their productivity and ensure successful ongoing employment and career development. Our goal at Job Access is to assist employers and employees with disabilities in levelling the playing field and negating the cost of employing a person with a disability. We aim to be a positive influence in assisting the Australian public to change their attitudes and perceptions so that employing people with a disability is part of the norm. What is Job Access? There are four programmes that are administered by the Job Access team. The Employer Engagement Team, which is until recently the subject, subsection was known as the National Disability Recruitment Coordinator. This is a team of specialists who work with employers all over Australia to advise them on employment practices and processes that are inclusive and welcoming to talent. We also manage the Complaints Resolution and Referral Service CRRS, which is a free and independent service to help people with a disability resolve complaints about government services. We also manage the National Disability Abuse and, Abuse and Neglect Hotline for reporting abuse and neglect of people with a disability. I'm going to be discussing the Employment Assistance Fund on behalf of which Job Access administers on behalf of the government. Employers can, assist, can access financial help to buy work-related modifications, equipment or services that help them employ or retain a person with a disability. Let us talk about the EAF. In conjunction with the website, the Job Access website, our staff are able to provide free individualised advice to the queries and the questions you may have. Our staff consist of a customer service team as well as a professional advisor team, which includes allied health professionals who are able to assist with all disability employment related matters. The Employment Assistance Fund has the flexibility to provide workplace modifications and solutions that really meet an individual's needs for both the employer and the employee so that the right solution can be in place. Essentially, we have a pot of money that is able to be provided to fund assistive devices, adaptive equipment and technology that is not considered a reasonable accommodation for an employer to cover. Alright, so how do you know if you are eligible for this fund? In order to be eligible to access the EAF, the person with a disability needs to be working a minimum of eight hours per week in paid employment or more. And this needs to be guaranteed to run for at least 13 weeks into the future. We do require documentation supporting this, either a copy of the employment contract or the completion of our standard employment confirmation form. 
if the person with a disability is self-employed, they need to be working for a minimum of 20 hours per week in paid employment and be earning at least equivalent to the minimum hourly wage. In terms of documentary evidence, we require a copy of their diary entries or workload entries for 13 weeks, as well as a business profit and loss statement or the individual's personal tax return to prove their declared earnings. We are also able to assist job seekers who are looking for work, who are linked in with a disability employment service provider. However, this is on a case-by-case -case basis. In order to be eligible for our funds, you need to be an Australian citizen or permanent residence. Um, if you're not born in Australia, we need a certified copy of these documents. The person or the employee also needs to have a confirmed disability that is expected to or has already lasted for two years. We require evidence of the person's disability from a medical professional. If you meet all of these criteria, you are eligible to access our funds. So what do we fund? The Employment Assistance Fund can be used to assist with funding of modifications in the workplace, including the physical work environment or built environment, modifications to work vehicles, and in the purchase of adaptive equipment or software. Specifically, the role of the professional advisor or occupational therapist that we have, as well as the assessor who comes out to visit the person, is to have a look at the person who has the disability, to understand their specific work-related barriers, and then to determine if adaptive technology can be used to overcome this. Understanding the work barriers is essential to determining the items that we can fund. In most instances, Ownership of any assistive devices or equipment approved will belong to the employee with a disability if they are portable. If it's fixed in the workplace, for example modifications to a bathroom, they will be made the ownership of the employer. It must be remembered that it is the employer's duty of care to meet equipment needs in order for anyone to do the role to complete the job. We often get requests for standard equipment that anyone would need to do the job, whether they have a disability or not. And we are not able to fund standard equipment. We only fund equipment that is specific to an individual's disability specific requirements. For example, a person who has low vision and is doing an administration role, they need to have a computer and a phone to do their job. So we can't fund this because anyone in that role would need a computer and a phone. However, if they need specific software or a larger monitor to do their job, we would be able to fund these disability specific items. This page here, I've got a couple of photos of a CCTV, a braille machine. We fund quite a few iPads, specialist chairs, car modifications, ramps, and so forth, but certainly not restricted to what I have on the screen. Over and above modifications, but not really applicable to this talk, we are able to fund Auslan interpreting for people who are deaf. We are also able to fund disability awareness training for employees and managers working with people who have a disability. This is up to $1,500, and it's specifically around general disability awareness training, deafness awareness training, and mental health awareness training. Over and above the technology that we provide, we are also able to provide on-the-job support, up to $1,500 for anyone who has a mental health condition or a learning disability to help them start off in their job but possibly not applicable to this presentation. I went and did a bit of research on the most recent cases that we've done with regards to any client who identified as having rheumatoid arthritis. So I thought I would just present a simple case, uh, very much our bread and butter run of the mill. Um, we had a lady who came to us as an individual, her name is Mary. She was working as a showroom manager and was working for 20 hours per week. 
she had been diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis and was in quite a bit of pain. Her tasks were mostly administrative. Um, she did a lot of computer-based work and a lot of phone-based work. Mary identified the following barriers in the workplace. She really struggled to sit for a long time and when she got up from sitting, she was very stiff and sore. And she identified that the chair that she had, despite meeting Australian standards, just didn't meet her disability specific needs. She had a lot of pain in her hip and lower back area. She was also able to identify that when she was typing, she got a lot of pain in her wrists and in her fingers and she had a lot of pain with mousing. So any of these tasks that she did for a sustained period of time, this would exacerbate her pain. We sent an assessor out to visit Mary once we had got all of her documentation. We also spoke with her employer, confirming her employment and confirming that we could come out and do an assessment. One of our OTs went and visited Mary at her workplace and Mary was able to demonstrate and show her what the employer had provided to do her job and how these were not suitable considering her disability. The assessor then organized for Mary to trial some equipment. She trialed a theropod ergonomic chair, um, a split level keyboard and a vertical mouse and she trialed this for a week in her workplace and found that her discomfort and pain had reduced with these pieces of technology. Once we had that evidence, the assessor was able to send us quotes for all the items and we were able to approve the funding. It was then up to Mary and her employer to purchase the items and claim reimbursement from us and we reimbursed within five working days. So this was a great success story for Mary. And we have many more like it. In summary, I just want to say, let's just recap on the process. As an employer or an employee, you can lodge an application for funding. You can find us on the job access website. You will need to firstly register as a user and you'll be given a username and password so that you can log into job access and you need to keep these in a safe place. You complete the details on the form, making sure that you remember to submit the document by signing off on the certification at the end. You will receive written notification that we have received the application. Once you have lodged the application, us here at Job Access have two days to get in touch with you, but usually you will have a phone call within four to six hours. We conduct a telephonic interview or via email if you're not a telephone user and we get all the information that we need to determine whether you are eligible for our funding or not. We then make an email request for some documentary evidence and once we have all the documents that we need on file we will refer an assessor to meet with you and your employer if this is required. It is essential that the employer is represented at the worksite assessment because a lot of the modifications that we make recommendations around will be bringing into the workplace and we need their approval. The assessor will then submit a report to all parties with recommendations. It is up to the job access professional advisor to make a determination as to what we can and cannot fund within the Employment Assistance Fund guidelines. We will then contact the individual and we'll contact the employer and let them know what we are able to fund and whether and come to some sort of agreement around whether everyone is happy. It is then we will send an approval letter. Once the person has the approval letter, it is up to the applicant to buy or procure the items and pay for them up front and then send job access the paperwork so that we can reimburse the funds. In general, the funds are reimbursed within three to five working days. Many people ask about the things that we can't fund and the caps on funding. We have a few caps. Building modifications, we can only fund up to $33,000, including GST. So that's if we're making an accessible bathroom or ramps and rails, anything where we're changing the building. 
we only have access up to $33,000 per individual per employer. If the individual was to move to a different employment, that $33,000 opens up again. In terms of Auslan funding, we have up to $6,000 a year that we can approve. All other items we don't have a cap on, but we will make sure that the government ha that we find the most cost-effective solution for the government. I would also like to state, as I said before, we're not able to fund items that are standard pieces of equipment that anyone else would need to do the job. It's only if it's specific to someone's disability. And we don't fund any maintenance or ongoing costs with any pieces of equipment that falls to the individual. If you would like to keep up to date with any news that we have, you can use these email addresses and we will be able to send you our newsletter. But all of our information is on our website. If you have any queries, please don't hesitate to email us. And the 1800 number is a central number that comes through to our office and we are so happy to answer your queries that you have. Thank you for your time.